This is a huge gamble for us. First day with the van. A little bit nervous, but I'm not very confident. Um, look, if we sell 10 lobsters, that's, that's where my head is. Skipper Squeezy is on his way to collect his new lobster van. Just trying a new market. That's, that's all we can do. Just trying to stay afloat, different ideas, thinking outside the box, and uh, I'm just praying that it pays off. He's down a massive $300,000 in revenue since the market collapsed two months ago. A lot of people over the last four weeks have lost their jobs. It's a massive gamble for us. We've chucked a fair bit of money into it. We've just got to see how it goes. The van is a $25,000 gamble. It looks finished. To try and stop his fishing business from going under. Welcome to the Tasmanian Gourmet Seafoods Lobster Bear. I think I'm going to get a lot of shit over it, but if that helps sell lobsters, I don't care. And hopefully we're selling lobsters and chips out of it, and uh, then we've got a bit of a market. That's the plan. This time. Come on, stop around! It's crunch time for the crew of the William Norley. Fishing boat, it's, it's, look, it's not a democracy. It's, I'm a dictator. I do feel out of my comfort zone. Squeezy's radical approach to combat the lobster market crisis. At the end of the day, we're only doing this to earn a buck. Try to stay afloat. Could leave the veteran skipper deeper in the red. What are we going to do if no one shows up, mate? I don't know, mate. Well, I've got no idea where those three are, but we're going to have to find them now. It's 900 bucks, so... And Greenhorn skipper Bryce recruits another rookie. There's nothing worse than losing gear. In a high-risk move to revive his season. Sure as hell can't afford to lose that at the moment. New Norfolk, Tasmania. That's where I should be, driving that. Instead, I'm in a country town selling a few lobsters. Skipper Squizzy is embarking on a radical new journey. Blakey's just firing up the deep fryers. He knows what's going on. I don't have a clue. I'll, I'll be honest. This ain't a boat. I'll be the deckhand in this, and he can tell me what to do to help get him going. I know the chips have got to go in the deep fryer. So that's about it. He's teamed up with his fish buyer, Blakey, and Blakey's wife, Tabitha. I'd just write lobster and chips on that one and big right. And Tabitha. Chips and what, and the half lobster and... Oh, well, here you go, lobster roll. In a 50-50 joint venture to try and stop both of their businesses from going under. Well, my normal job is exporting lobsters to China. Uh, and this is what we've had to resort to to try and move some product. China's shut down, we've got airline problems, fishermen can't go to work. You just gotta make sure that generator stays working for us. Hopefully people will be kind. She'll be right. Yeah. Get through the teething problems. Yep. Shit hits the fan. That's yep. the captain's responsibility. And he's the one that bosses us around. And that's Blakey. Come on! Come down! The slowing demand for lobsters in China. It's uh, quarter to 11. We haven't had a customer yet. Has left fishermen and fish buyers out of work. 50 bucks is probably the best I can do for a couple of hundred kilo. 50 bucks, you know, that's a loss. Take it here wrong, eh? Half lobster and chips, 25 bucks. It's cheaper than a palmy. Lobster, well, 70 90 Yep. 17 90 If Squizzy and Blakey's $50,000 gamble is to pay off... OK, whole lobsters from $45 each, $65 per kilo. Bargain. They'll need to sell 180 lobsters, which Squizzy caught on his last trip. We're hoping to diversify and, and be able to bring our, our products together to hopefully be able to keep afloat and uh, pay some bills, eh, Squiz? Let's get through day one yep. first. <laughs> yep. 
I don't know how it's going to go in the short term, but I think long term it's going to take off. At the end of the day, we're only doing all this to earn a buck. Try to stay afloat. Squizzy has already remortgaged his house to cash flow his business. What are we going to do if no one shows up, mate? I don't know, mate. Time will tell if his retail sales strategy has any chance of commercial success. Failure may trigger bankruptcy. I will be honest, I do feel out of my comfort zone. It's all a bit strange. It's like the first day at work when you're a teenager working at a shop. Nervous. Hey, how you going? Yeah, good. Good. Just go down that mark I'll give you. Just chuck five or eight there. Southeast Tasmania. Okey dokes. Good All luck. Right. See ya. Bye. 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 And the Anbri Dacra is steaming towards the Bruni Island fishing grounds. Yeah, for this trip, the old man's given me direction, call it direction, of where the pots are meant to go. Um, so at least I know if they come up shit, you can't be pissed off with me because you told me to put them there. Greenhorn skipper Bryce is relaunching his season. Like well, throwing a pot over the board, overboard without a grapple. After his maiden fishing trip failed badly. 35 for the whole trip. Don't know many people that work for nothing. Bryce did a stint as deckhand on board the Bold Contender. You do not want the bait saver to go up here. It's a little bit like being at school, but it's the best kind of school. Hands on and learning. None of this book shit. Learning from the master. Yep. Squiz is one of the best bloody fishermen in the fleet. Uh, and having him is just to show me anything's wicked. This time round. <laughs> crazy. Bryce isn't going out alone. Get the chafer. Yep. Go around. Yep. Pull it tight, make sure it's over there. Make sure it's nice and tight. And you're good to go. He's hired his own deckhand. So when I yell yep is when you push it, all right? Roger. Yep. It's 18-year-old Lockie's first time on a lobster boat. Yep. Been doing a lot of tuna fishing. Bryce came in, needed a deckhand. Yeah, so I'm keen to make a bit of money. But if we can fill the boat up, then that gives me a solid pay and I'll clear a couple of grand, so I'll be stoked. See how that's loose. In the morning, we'll go over a few methods to make that a bit tighter. Bryce has set a trip target of 250 kilos of lobster. If sold off the wharf, it could deliver a $16,000 payday. I've been getting 350 fish for a week, but that's about 250 kilo. Go back out, do it again, that's half a ton for, for two weeks sort of thing. That'd, that'd be good to do. Bryce couldn't make the last mortgage payment on his $150,000 boat loan. He can't afford to fail again. You know, this trip's a lot, a lot of a redemption trip. In a lot of ways, like, you know, I've got another, another mouth to feed on the boat. I've got someone relying on earning money so he can pay his rent. Yeah, it brings more pressure having someone else on the boat. Yeah, that's it, mate. I was just ringing the touch base, and I was just wondering, just sort of ring around, seeing what's going on and what is going on, and if anything's changed and what's happening. The Bass Strait. And the crew of the William Norling is seven days into a nine-day trip. I'm just a bit dubious, though, as, as the fish get harder and harder to catch, which they, you know, they get slower and slower. Skipper Danny is still no closer to finding a wholesale fish buyer for his catch. Because, you know, everyone's sort of doing the same thing here. Oh, yeah, hang on, they're just checking on this and checking on that. Everyone's a bit... Talked a few buyers, they're a bit nervous. It's just... Yeah, they're nervous, it makes me nervous. Um, catching them's going to be the easy part, I reckon. Selling them's going to be the hard part, so... We've still got a time off our sleeve, but... We're not feeling too much commitment from them, so... Danny is gambling $27,000 in running costs to catch 1,000 kilos of lobsters. 
Yep. You hope someone can take your fish for a, for a price. You just hope. You know, and that's, that's about how it is. And... A potential $50,000 payday comes down to Danny locking in a buyer before returning to port. I've got a bit of extra pressure on me too, like buying the brother out of the business, you know. It's just there's, there's... You wake up with it in the morning, like the weight's on you. Four weeks before the market crashed in China, Danny borrowed $300,000 to buy out his brother's share of the William Norling. Mark! Go on, Daniel. On top of Danny's financial burden, New Decky Macca has struggled to adapt to the veteran skipper's hot-tempered ways. Get your shit together, Macca. Don't f*** it up, right? For the rest of the day and the trip. Look at me, Macca. No. With two days to catch 215 kilos of lobster, time is running out. Mate! And so is Danny's patience with Macca. Yep. Mark. Look at Daniel. You haven't looked the floats up. Not focused. He's just that's the second part in a row he's just done that. You're thick. A fishing boat, it's, it's look, it's not a democracy. It's I'm a dictator. That's a bit how it is. It's sort of how it needs to be. I well, think he's got confidence in catching the fish. He's just obviously you know financial struggles with the price drop and brother leaving and I reckon you'd be the slowest I've ever had, Macca. I reckon hands down easy too, I reckon. There'd be plenty of dickheads slower than me. Not working on either, wouldn't they? <laughs> Come on, Macca. Hurry up. Christ. Come on, stop around. Hey. G'day, mate. What are you after? I just want to grab half lobster and chips, please. Yeah, mate. No worries. Thank you. There you go. Two more. Bloody unbelievable. People are just turning up here flat out. It's not even lunchtime. It's uh, mind-blowing, actually. New Norfolk, on the banks of Tasmania's River Derwent. Thank you. It's been a long time since I had lobster. No worries. Thank Enjoy. you. Bye. It's opening day for Squizzy's new lobster van. I, I didn't think we'll probably go this well so early, but it uh, looks like the town of New Norfolk might get right behind us. And uh, that's great. So we got um, four half grades. Oh, Hang on, we need to do these first. Two half lobsters and chips, one whole cooked lobster. So Bella, can you grab a whole lobster, please? We got three halves left in one bin. I just didn't think we'd sell that bin. Just to get some of the best produce around, these fine craze from Squizzy. It's usually shipping them out all over the place. So, yeah, it's good to be able to get them. New venture partner Blakey has underestimated the public's appetite for freshly cooked lobsters. It's been open, what, a few hours? We've sold out a whole craze. We've got half of our half lobsters left. We've nearly sold out of scallops. Lobster rolls are going. Just as well, Squizzy went and got those 180 craze or we'd be bugged. We wouldn't have anything to sell. How many more picking up? I'd probably just know the box for, I reckon, because we won't have any more. We don't have any fishermen out, do we? Well, you got our 182, but yeah. <laughs> Rightio, all right, I'll go now. With the van's lobster stocks running low, Squizzy needs to make an urgent run to collect the rest of the lobsters he caught for the launch. Put a lot of time and money into it. And it look, at the end of the day, it was rushed. We had to get it up as quick as we could to get it on the road. And it looks like it's going to pay off. And that's... Woohoo! Yeah, baby. Lobsters. That's it for fresh cooked lobster? That's it. That's it. I think it would be 182. We probably should have got 382. Hopefully it keeps going. Touch wood. No wonder it didn't catch, Loggy. Got no base. I'm already f***ing up. That's embarrassing. <laughs> the Southern Ocean, Tasmania. I forgot to bait the pot before we shot it in. We haven't baited for the next shot. Just glad the price isn't too angry at you. 
and Greenhorn skipper Bryce is pulling his first line of pots for the trip. Well, is this one's bait. <laughs> It's the first day I've been nice to him. With his new rookie deckhand, Lockie. Another wasted pot. Bait saver not in properly. Probably deterred them from climbing in. The bait saver is made from heavy duty plastic mesh, designed to attract lobsters while conserving the bait. Won't do much when it's wobbling around like this. It's got to be in there nice and solid. Oh, my brain not working. Just didn't, didn't hook it over tight enough. Just fell out. Blankety blank, 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 blank. What is lobster? Hey, look, a lobster. It's the first lobster. And a velvet crab. That's a size lobster, first one for the trip. Yeah, let's keep getting these pots up. So far, I've pulled 11 for one. So, not very good numbers, but one is better than none. With $150,000 of debt hanging over his head, Bryce needs to catch 250 kilos of lobster for a possible $16,000 payday. It's meant to be one right there. Find out where I already pulled it. So we did a Yui before. Came down the bottom and then we, then we left, so I think that should be 50. Hold on. Oh, right, I'll count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Wait, where did I start? Did I start at the back, didn't I? I forgot. Well, I've got no idea where those three are, but we're going to have to find them now. It's 900 bucks, so... Bryce failed to mark on the plotter the location of three of his pots. It's an expensive case of the blind leading the blind. Now have to go the whole way back to the start, where we started this morning, go through the entire shot, and just, just make sure. Absolutely. There's nothing worse than losing gear. Pot's about 300 bucks. You know, the way we're catching the fish, 900 bucks is a fair bit. Sure as hell can't afford to lose that at the moment. Oh, duck. Just built. Six pots up for three. Half crab pot. The Bass Strait, Tasmania. Skipper Danny's on track to hit his 1,000 kilo lobster target, assuming his last line of pots come good. 25 fathom, you couldn't got any better bottom. I think we're just too deep or something, Macro, I don't know. Just too deep. I think we're just too deep. Shit ass. Danny dropped his pots to 25 fathoms. That's a depth of about 45 metres. Oh, the update is there's no craze. I don't know why, but. I don't know. I just, I mean, all the different depth ranges. It's just it's one of those days. Still suddenly shit. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Can't get sexy suddenly. Can't get nothing suddenly. A large southerly swell is wreaking havoc on the crew's potential fifty thousand dollar payday. Fish just don't like suddenly. I don't know if the water maybe goes a bit colder, or they just don't like it. Ah! I just can't believe that'd be so grim. That'd be costing me like crazy. Asking you shall receive, eh? <laughs> oh, it's got some. He might be the crow of the day, Macca. The only crow of the day. Oh, bullshit, Daniel. The crew needs at least 70 lobsters for the shot to hit their one-ton target. 21. All up. It's just gloomy shit. Just shit. I just honestly couldn't comprehend that, that was 
going to the outcome in this one. Worst case scenario would have been a crab pot. No, 50 pots, 50 fish. 21. That is bleak. Anyway, we'll get back over here. We're just going to shuffle them in a bit tighter around the rock. It's going to be shallower. That's what we just have to do. Danny wants to try one more shot, which involves relocating closer to shore to target the big red lobsters feeding in the shallower waters. We've come in here to West Point and the gear's all still hooked up for long ropes, but we want to go to the 20 fathom ropes to work around the shore here. So we're sort of going to unhook as we go and hook the 20s up. Changing lines during a pot drop comes with risk. I've been fishing for 27 years. I've been on this boat for 20 of them. This is only the third, second or third time I've done this way, so, yeah. Yep. Just got to make sure we unhook one at a time and... Get it, back, get it back in order so it all goes back together properly. The main thing is make sure the pots are hooked up to a bit oh, of rope. Yeah, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's everyday shit, that is. One mistake and the $300 pot will plunge to the ocean floor with yep. no rope attached. Nah, nah, I haven't done this, done this way before. You can't have too much line here, you see, because if, if there's marine mammals and that stuff around, they'll get tangled up in it, so we try and have the right length of line. Yep. You can have a malfunction really easy and you can lose gear. Lucky last, that's it. We've got through our little little setup there with no f up, so. Yep. Happy days. That's 50 pots down, all with rope attached. Yeah, no, I've got through that alright. Macca did a good job there actually. Don't, no one tell him that. Macca has come through with flying colours. If I get the top side of 75 crows in the morning, I'll be happy. So we need at least 70 shot to make our target. A ton. We want to catch a ton of fish, which will be about 700 crows. Shoot them like my life depends on it. Anyway. But even if they do hit their target, Danny still needs to find a buyer. Otherwise, all of their hard work will be for nothing. Don't know, don't know, don't know. I mean, I could have just shot three in, ironically, and not put the mark in, but they're either going to be here, there, or there. Like, they're either they're there, but they're not there. So that's out of the options. You press it one of them, you say, yeah. Or sometimes I don't, but they're in together. So they're either going to be here, but I counted them, when we pulled them this morning, I counted them. When we went there, I counted them. Because when you've gotten them that far apart, you count them as you go. 520 kilometres southeast, and the search continues for the rookie crew's three missing lobster pots. Check two of the three spots, or we can open because I'm a dickhead and I missed them. Otherwise, this trip's already 900 bucks down on top of the rest of it. Just don't know, but we'll just look up here, go back down there. If they're not there, we'll just keep going. We've just come back along the last section here. There's three pots here. None of them are, uh, are mine. Uh, recreational fishermen, that's their gear. Um, one of them wasn't there last night. I know there was two. I'm just confused. I don't know it, like... After bagging six lobsters from their last two shots and losing $900 worth of pots, Bryce's 250 kilo target is looking further away than ever. So far from just this morning, uh, we're $380 down. So we've got roughly $345 worth of lobsters, which is the six of them. Um, but bait, fuel, all the rest. It's about 725 bucks, so it only leaves us leaves us uh, oh, negative 380. So fingers crossed the day shot's got something in it to try and make it up. Oh 
another one's been off here. Yeah. Three we would have had. We've lost three already. Three dead to an octopus. That's about 150 bucks or something. Big oppy. Octopus use their tentacles to strangle and suffocate the lobsters before injecting their prey with an enzyme which breaks down the lobster's flesh. He's come for one of your bait savers that hasn't been put in properly. Oh, no, yes. Not catching any fish. Yeah. Really slow. Blankety for blank, 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 blank. Sweet hole. Oh. What are we trying to catch again? Come on, Lockie. Get us some lobsters. That's lobsters. Larry the lobster. Wicked. 14 to 20 fathom. Like right on that money is fish in it. Holy mother. Yeah, boy. How did you even get in that little hole, mother? Beast. <laughs> Give him a little tuggle. It's a good looking bin, isn't it? I haven't seen it that full. Might just get a second bin going to put him in, Loggy. Yeah, boy. That full bin there, Lockie's probably 1400 bucks. I don't know what it really else to say. I'm happy. Christ, I'm a bit happier. Yeah, well, that there can pay for the gear that's lost, for sure. Wow, well, this is a real, real good, real good turn for the trip. Bryce's third shot of the trip delivers more than 40 kilos of lobster. A win at last. Worth a red hot $3,000. The greenhorn skipper and his even greener deckhand a back from the brink of disaster. As soon as you've tied that on, push it. Yep. So that, that, that covers everything. Absolutely everything for me. So if I don't, don't get $8,000 a trip, um, don't make a single dollar. So um, between insurance, fuel, food, bait, maintenance, um, everything just, everything costs a lot. I'll turn the motor off. It was all plastic. Wonderful. This is wicked. Yeah. I was just down getting some desserts out and uh, just got a smell of burning plastic and um, we just popped the engine hatch up and seen a bunch of smoke sort of come out, so. Fire at sea is a lobster man's worst nightmare. What do we have on? Can one of you answer your phone for a sec or give me an urgent buzz? If Bryce can't trace the source of the burning smell, he could be forced to return to port. Smell it straight away, man, and then the smoke piled on the pair of the engine room. Hello? Five minutes out, mate. Five minutes? All right, no worries. Roger. Hello. New Norfolk, Tasmania. She's a mad rush to get back, get these lobsters back to the van because we don't want people walking away. And Squizzy is on an urgent mission to restock the $50,000 lobster van on opening day. Thank you very much. This thing's booming off, absolutely booming. Absolutely, he couldn't have, he wouldn't have dreamt this in a million years. Mate, can I have two lobsters, thanks? Yep, all two? Right, no. About a kilo? Yep, easy. Good. Better than being on the boat, man. Don't know about that. Don't know about that. But I enjoy it being down here and enjoy people like you coming along to buy a couple. I appreciate you turning up no, and great. Uh, it's great to see this out and doing well for you. Thanks, mate. I'm hungry now, looking at all this lobster. Starving. Mm. Oh, I was just flouring a bit of lobster and dipping it in our lovely beer batter, frying it off. 
Normally we'd use bigger chunks. This is made for their lobster rolls. To keep ahead of the competition, Squizzy's new business partner, Blakey, has chefed up some new menu options. It's beautiful little golden pieces of lobster. She can't get much better than that. Beer battered lobster, Blakey. Nice. Yeah, mate. With the lobster market crisis showing no signs of easing, diversity may be key to industry survival. This is a winner, mate. <laughs> this, is, this is what you've got to get on the menu. Gonna have to send you back to sea, mate, if we're gonna serve that dish. It'll make, it'll make our name. Hmm. Last one? Last one, Mick, no more lobsters. Is that all you're after? Yep. Awesome, thank you very much. Enjoy your lobster. Thank you. Lucky last. <laughs> Thank you. The launch delivers a much needed $11,830 payday. Squeezy's $5,000 better off than if he'd sold his catch at wholesale prices. We have completely sold out of lobsters now. We are out by three o'clock. So in four hours, we have sold the lot. So now people are gonna be turned away. Now you feel sorry for them. You can't, you can't win. <laughs> you just can't win. Mate, I, I thought we'd probably sell 10. You do the honours, mate. You do the honours? Yep. Well, Squizzy, you need to go back to sea, buddy. <laughs> we need more fish. I am at sea. Look, I'm just sitting in a pot now. <laughs> we'll give it six hours and we'll go pull it. That's a big pot. Lovely. They have prevailed, Macca. They have. Oh, a bit of kissy kissy in here. Probably not size, but. Oh, you bastard! Black Pyramid Rock, Tasmania. Nine banger. One more. Probably a ten banger. Ten pack. Oh! <laughs> That's it. Juicy. Ten. You know, I can't complain with that. And Danny's gamble to drop his pots close to shore is paying off. We have this morning shot that we're going in. We're going to fill the crates down that side of the wells. That'll give us 700 fish, roughly. And then uh, that'll be about a ton, so... After nine days at sea, Danny and Macca are on the verge of hitting their 1,000 kilo target. Lucky last, Macca. That's a real dead Macca. I've got to turn because I've got to come in front of me. So that's a real dead. Yeah, he sounds like he's in there. Oh, he's, he's fouled properly, that one. He's in tight. Their last pot is snagged on the ocean floor. <laughs> if the line gets severed, they'll lose the pot and any lobsters inside it. The, the tide at the pyramid runs so hard that the rope lays on the bottom, it gets fouled into all the cracks and crevices in the bottom, and sometimes it's not even the pot that's fouled, it's just the rope that the tides pulled the rope down, pulled all the floats down, and it's just, um, oh, it's a prick of a joint. It is a prick of a joint. Oh, I've had Daisy, you snap off eight, nine pots in a day, just trying to get the gear back. Oh, the pipe is the, the tricks of all tricks. There was an old bloke on the mainland that taught me the idea of it. It goes down and it drops, just drops the, the rope away from the ledge a bit. Yeah, Mac. The pipe also protects the bit of rope. It was jammed right in a crack. Quick, no, pull the rope through. Grab right that. And it just drops it away. It just changes the dynamics of pulling the pot, getting, getting the pot out. Quick, keep pulling fast. Back on the other side. Uh, put it on there, then go and hook the floats up. Any time. <laughs> Unbelievable that works. Oh, there he's home. 117, Macca. Lovely. The final shot delivers 117 lobsters. Danny and Macca have hit their one-ton target. Hang on, I'll just lean on the scales a bit more. <laughs> That's how we'll get him up a bit more. Just gotta touch the scales. I'd say he's a three nine four, four, isn't he? But Danny's job is only half done. 
How are you, Dave? What's going on? For his $27,000 gamble to pay off, he needs to lock in a buyer willing to pay the right price. Hey, how are you, Dave? Good, mate. What's happening? Hey, uh, transition. Ah, very good. Well, we like the sound of that. What's, um... What is the price of the fish? Well, it's 45, under kilo, 45, above two kilos. The buyer's offering $45 per kilo for lobsters over two kilos. Danny's holding out for $55. Yeah, I wouldn't say that really suits me. I'd be a lot happier if I'd get, say, one to two and a half. That'd just sort of help me out at my end a bit. Um, what, are your, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that sort of thing? Are you still there, Dave? Are you sinking? No, nah, just nearly catching on fire. There's something, um, was something burning. Um. On board the Anbright Dakara, Greenhorn skipper Bryce has put an SOS call into his father Kent after discovering smoke in his engine room. I was down in the um, under the floor in the wheelhouse. And I was just getting in the esky, and then I smelt plastic like burning, and popped the engine room up, and then a bunch of smoke came up. Oh, oh I can smell it now. Hold up. Yeah, you need to check all the connections. In the bed space, Loggy, yeah. you've got the switchboards. Yeah. There's a 12 volt and a 24. Can you make sure that everything's facing the same way? Yeah. There's one that's down. Yeah, what is it? It's in between um, like the bilge and the... It's in between the two sets of orange ones. There's a black one that's down. I mean, the bilge has tripped. What about The bilge on the 24 volt. The electric bilge pump removes unwanted water from the boat's hull. It's a critical safety device. If it stops working, the crew will be forced to return to port. Yep, turn off, turn off, turn off. Turn off and flick the switch off. Air yeah, bilge fried. That trip itself. Right. Oh, here comes the smell. Problem solved. Missing one bilge out of four. So you've got your bilge pump, which will pump the water out to make sure you stay afloat. Absolute necessity to have. So losing one isn't really good. Uh, anything else happen? We lose one more, we'll have to go in and get it fixed and replace them. Um, too risky to be out here and not have, have the right amount of bilges. After borrowing $150,000 to buy a lobster boat and spending a further $90,000 on an overhaul, Bryce is facing yet another bill. Any, any situation like that, where you don't know what it is, or you can just smell, especially a plastic burning is... That's half the boat, half the boat's made of plastic, so... Um, but at least we got on top of it quick. Oh, at least it tripped itself, so it did it for us, but... Yeah, well, the batteries. Yeah, it was good it wasn't the two and a half grand's worth of batteries, so... Problem solved, time to have some dessert. It was the closest experience I've had to having a fire on a boat. Luckily, we've got the safety precautions. <laughs> Hey, how you going? Good. Good. With the crisis averted, Bryce checks in with his partner, Tamara. Oh, nothing, just fighting a bit of smoke and eating moose. That's about it, really. What are you doing? You're not calling me from shore, are you? No, no. No, the boat didn't go down in flames, so it's all right. No, we, um... I was just getting some of the... Didn't go down... Wait, 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 wait. Didn't go down in flames? No, 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 it stopped. It, it stopped itself. Just the bilge pump. No, we have so many grey hairs. Oh, don't worry about that. That's what hair dye's for. Uh, OK. All righty. <laughs> Enjoy your sleep. Thank you. Talk be to you soon. Be safe. No more fires on the boat, please. That's right. It'll be full of lobsters tomorrow. OK. All right. Love you, bye. I love you. Sleep well. Woody, boy. Boy. Bye. Tamara gets concerned and, and everything, like any any normal partner of a fisherman does. Um, wouldn't be the easiest thing. It wasn't easy as a kid knowing where Dad was going. You know, you couldn't talk to him for a few weeks or a week or however long, um, and the danger involved in fishing. Yeah, she freaks out a fair bit. Um, it's just something that we'll work through and um, she'll get used to it, I guess, over time, like I did. Yeah, but now she freaks out. She's not a fan of it. Thinks it's a bit hectic. So, there's. The 
last straight. Do you reckon we can go to two and a half kilo split or what? What's the go, you reckon? And Danny's decision to fish big with no confirmed buyer all comes down to this phone call. Yeah, I just made a quick call. Can you get them in today? Uh, oh, Jesus. Um, I'm four hours from Stanley. Well, if you can land them today, it's got to be today. Yep. And I can get them out in time. I can do the two and a half kilos, but it's for today only. All right, so I can have two, so one, one to two and a half, fifty-five dollars and forty-five dollars for all the rest. Yep. Yep. All right, mate. That sounds reasonable. All right. Um. Yeah, perfect, mate. Thanks, so much. thanks, Dave. Okay. See you, mate. Ciao. See you, bye. Bye. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's keen. The, the greatest prices. Um, they're still buying. Danny has negotiated a fifty-dollar per kilo average sale price. $5,000 up from the buyer's opening offer. That's assuming he can offload the haul before 5 p.m. today. If we get a commitment from the buyer to take our fish, we're going to be at the wharf before, you know, quicker than rumble stilts can. Don't worry about that because we just need to keep getting rid of our fish while we can. Look, you just want to go and do your best. You want to do your best for yourself, your family, your crew. You know, that's what you're out here for. You don't, you don't want to be going just to make wages. You want to be going to make some good kanga and get ahead in life. Stack them in here like apples. Watch where they go, Mac. Fish with that one. Oh, a tractor. He asked for brindles, didn't he? You say you wanted some brindles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's plenty now. Is that the last one, is it? It's harder getting them in there than what it is to get them out of there. Just going to do it quick so they're in the truck and gone, you know? Shame they're not worth a bit more money, but we're still alive, aren't we? We're still, we're still going forwards. Oh, yep, you're all done in there. Oh, well, I feel in my bit. Yep. You've got to tell me what I had. Yeah, yep, I'm just doing it now. You don't know that they're quite going to average what you thought they were going to average. You just think. What do you think you got? I'll say 1,040, 1,050. 1,050. Oh, 1,094. Nice. The 1,094 kilo haul delivers a $54,700 payday. Pretty happy with that, really, yeah. So, um, we're just sort of uh, loading a bit of gear on, getting organised and going again. Danny's risky gamble has paid dividends, but there's no time for rest. The William Norling is heading straight back to sea. <laughs> Maybe it's stupidity. <laughs> Maybe we are being stupid, I don't know, but... Anyway, we're going to make the hay while the sun shines. The sun's not really out much, but we're going to try and get it out, so...